tell a story, we start with Sheikha Sheikha, Sheikha Harim. It means stir a story, a true story. So I'm going to say, and you guys say, Sheikha Harim. Sheikha Sheikha. It's also sometimes our word for baby. So I'm singing, the bird is singing, the bird is singing, the bird is singing, little bird. Inspiring lyrics, aren't they? <laughs> Except you see that they are. Because in the beginning days of the world, there was a little bird who would not sing with the other birds. He would not fly with the other birds. His name is Meadowlark. And if you've ever seen a meadowlark, you know he's really very handsome. Creator gave him a bright yellow vest, a little black and white necklace he wears around his throat. But meadowlark couldn't see any of the things that made him handsome. All he could see was that Creator had given him enormous feet. <laughs> and he was so embarrassed by the size of his feet that he spent his days hiding in the tall grass, sulking, feeling sorry for himself, saying things like, Creator made a mistake. These are eagles' feet. And he was sitting there that way one day when a grasshopper came along. The grasshopper, going around the world on important business, was hopping through the tall grass and boom, bumped smack into that metal arm. He picked himself up. He shook himself up. He said, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. Your bird, birds belong to trees, not bugs. Bugs live on the ground. Birds don't live on the ground. Birds live in the trees. You're supposed to be in the trees. Meadowlark said, I'm afraid to come out. The others will laugh. Why would they laugh? They would laugh at my feet. Your feet, your feet. What's so funny about your feet? I never saw a foot do anything funny before. What? <laughs> I, I see your point. <laughs> Anansi. 
We are so sweet and juicy. Come and eat us. Anansi loved melons. But he was much too lazy to grow his own melon patch. So he watched and he waited. As the sun was high in the sky and the heat of the day came on, it was around noon time, Elephant decided it was too hot to continue working. So he would go back into his house for a nap. This was just the moment Anansi was waiting for. Anansi broke a thorn off the thorn tree, lowered himself, onto the biggest, ripest melon and made a small hole. He went inside and ate and ate and ate. He ate till he was as round as a berry. He decided that elephant would be coming back soon, so he should stop. But as he tried to get out, he had a surprise. The small hole he made was great for a thin spider but much too small for a big fat one. Jonathan was 11 and he was dying of leukemia. And when he was close to his death, he said to his parents, when I die, cast my ashes on Lake Michigan. Jonathan died. The parents and Charlie, he was the brother five, went out on Lake Michigan and cast Jonathan's ashes. And Jonathan's mother saw a butterfly and said, look, that's Jonathan. The next day again, they were out in the boat and they got a butterfly and his mother said, that's Jonathan. The third day, they were on the beach, Lake Michigan, and Charlie, five years old, was stirring up the sand, and he saw an old gray moth fly up. And Charlie said, look, that's Jonathan, but he's wearing a different shirt. <laughs> the story that I'm going to tell you took place long, long ago, and there was a cat. And she was a very fine cat with me. You know, the very proper sort. And the cat was hungry, so she decided to do what all cats do and go hunting. And she spied a bird, so she got down low and she crouched over to this bird, very, very quietly. And then she pounced, she grabbed that bird, and she was about to take a great big bite when bird said, Cat, I'm surprised at you. I have never met a cat with such bad manners. Cat was kind of shocked and taken aback. And bird continued, Don't you know you're supposed to wash your paws before you eat? Cat hung her head in shame. She couldn't believe it. And being the proper sort of cat that she was, she didn't want anyone, not even Bird, to think that she had bad manners. So very, very quickly, can you guess what she did? Right. Yeah, she started to clean herself, and Bird flew away. Up into the bushes she went. Now Cat was even more embarrassed. She really hung her head down low, and then she got a little bit angry. So she looked around quickly to make sure that nobody else saw what had just happened and slunk off. Now, from that moment on, Kat has always washed her paws after she eats. <laughs> Whenever we tell a story back home, the person who's telling the story used to sit in a chair and we used to circle around like right now. So and all the time we go close and we listen very carefully. One of the stories we used to tell that was very scared was like that. Every child needs to get scared from the story. But this is a different story. This is a story that I'm going to tell is about working together and striving together. And if you're separated, you're alone and you're weak. But if you're together and united, you can accomplish your goals. This is a story about an old man. He had the power to, he was very smart. So he could control monkeys. He tells the monkeys whatever he wants and he gives them instructions and they will obey. If they didn't obey, he will beat them up. And he taught all the monkeys, the older monkeys, to do that to everybody. So it was like an army. So if one monkey steps out of line, the other monkey punishes him. So the monkeys, early in the morning, they would go to the jungle, gather all the bananas, all the fruits, and when they come, the old man will come, and he will take one-tenth of everyone. So if you had ten bananas, he will take one. 
But the old man couldn't eat all the bananas. So he stored them, he kept them in a place. And he put two guards, the biggest monkeys, the gorillas. They would guard and anybody comes, they would crush them. So one time, the monkeys, they, they used to teach their children the rules. You, whatever the old man says, you have to listen to him. If you don't, you'll get beaten up. So one day, they were walking to the jungle to gather all the fruits. And one little monkey, he asked his dad, Dad, does the old man own the jungle? Dad says, no, he doesn't. The young, the young, the young monkey said, does the old man own the trees? The, little, the dad says, no, oh, he doesn't. Then before the little kid could say, why? The other monkeys heard, and they, says, they start begging. The old man was sleeping, and when he woke up, he found all the bananas he stored was gone. All the storage was broken. And all the monkeys and the gorillas went back to the jungle. The end. And so, these men, he said, that we see in front of Moss Park Armories, that have no families that they have been able to find, that have no homes, were men that he once fought with, once fought for our freedom, for our country. The message he said to my cousin and I was that we were first born generation here in Canada, and that we had an obligation, a duty, to take care of our country, and to take care of those who fought for our country, so that our country continues to be free and that we can continue to believe in whatever faith we believe in here on this soil. But that we have to remember what happened during World War II so that it never happens again. I did not realize when he told me this, the impact it would have on who I am today. Today I work and live in this fantastic community I have the privilege of hearing many stories many days. Stories of countries where war has been prominent and how people have come here for respite, just like my grandfather. So my story is from there to here, just to indicate that quite often we don't understand how our lives are shaped by the actions and memories of others.